This is a MacBook Pro. And this is Cakewalk by BandLab, the best free music production software made for Windows. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Cakewalk by BandLab is a fully featured digital audio workstation or door and you can use it for music production and incredibly it's free, but it's only made for the Windows operating system. Unfortunately, for those people using the Mac operating system, there isn't such a great choice. So I'm often asked if we can get Cakewalk to run on Mac hardware and the answer is, Yes, and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. There's no hacks, there's no virtual machines, and we're actually going to be using something which is built into the Mac operating system itself. But before we get into that, let's talk about the what's and the why's. So the MacBook Pro, which I've installed Cakewalk on, is this one, the 2015 model with a 15-inch Retina display. It's got a 2.8 gigahertz i7 processor. It's got 16 gigabytes of RAM and a whopping one terabyte flash drive, very similar to an SSD drive, so a non-physical drive, so it runs nice and quiet and really, really quick. So it's great specs, actually, to run Cakewalk on. And you can pick these up on eBay for around about five to six hundred dollars. That's really good value. And as I say, it's got plenty of grunt to actually run Cakewalk. So if you've got one of these sitting around, there's definitely no need to go out and buy a new PC laptop or desktop to run Cakewalk. And if you're looking to buy a secondhand laptop specifically to run something like Cakewalk, then this is a really good option. So I've been really careful not to say that we can run Cakewalk on the Mac operating system. That's still not possible. But what we can do really quickly, really easily, and really efficiently is run Windows a alongside the Mac operating system on our Mac. And we can use that to host Cakewalk. Now we're actually going to use something which is built into the Mac operating system itself to do that. It's been there for many, many years and it forms the basis of our plan here. And it's something called Boot Camp. Let's find out how I went about installing Cakewalk on this MacBook Pro. So I actually started the process in the Mac operating system. So I started up my Mac as normal and once it was open, I went to the Safari browser, which is there for everybody. Once I opened that, I then went to this address, which you can see at the top here. I'll put a link for this in the description down below. And then I downloaded Windows 10 as an ISO file. I selected that right at the bottom here. It's the only selection for me. And I just scrolled down a bit and then clicked on the confirm button. After the screen had refreshed, I then went ahead and selected my language, which is English. Hit confirm again here to refresh the screen. And then I went ahead and I clicked on the 64-bit download. Now here in Safari, we can monitor the download progress at the top right-hand corner here, but I'll spare you the pain of that and we'll fast forward the video to the point where I had it downloaded. And once it had downloaded, I actually went ahead and I quit Safari as I wasn't going to need that anymore. So I press Shift Command U on my keyboard to open up the Utilities folder on my Mac. I then double clicked on Bootcamp Assistant and then went down and pressed Continue. I then went and selected the only selection I could make, which was the ISO file I downloaded earlier. And then I went ahead and decided on a partition size. Now, if you're mainly using this for Windows, you may want a small Mac OS partition size like this one. Um, or if you're mainly using it for Mac, then you may make your Windows partition small. I'd make it at least 200 gigabytes, but I actually went ahead and made mine 300 gigabytes, which is probably enough for my needs to have Cakewalk on this computer with a few plugins, etc. I then clicked on install and it went ahead and downloaded some support files that it needs for installation after Windows is installed. This is basically going to be used to set up um, the hardware and the drivers needed for things like your webcam and your network, etc on your Mac. Now that takes a little while and sometimes you may think it's frozen, but it does take a while, but I am gonna save you the pain and fast forward to the point where that's done. Now after that's done, it's actually gonna automatically restart your Mac. The screen will flicker, etc., And then when it does restart, it's going to go into the regular Windows installation process.
Now, if you've installed Windows before, most of this is going to seem quite familiar, but there are some slight differences which I'm going to point out. So hang in there with me here because you'll want to know about these. So as you can see, I went ahead and I selected my language and time settings here. So I'm in Australia, so my time is English Australian format. I then clicked on next. Now I have a product key for this installation of Windows. If you don't have a product key, you can still go ahead and install Windows and it's gonna work. I think there's a watermark um, uh, once you've installed it and there are some restrictions on updates perhaps, but you will be able to test this out and run Cakewalk, etc. Now, if you don't have a product key, the next couple of screens are also going to be slightly different for you because by entering the product key, the system knows which version of Windows I have. But if you don't enter one, then it doesn't know. So on the next couple of screens, you will actually have to select a version to install. So there's things like Windows Home and there's things like Windows uh, Pro, etc. Now I prefer the pro version, but I do believe that Cakewalk is gonna run fine in the home version as well. So anyway, after I went ahead and entered my product key, I then went ahead and clicked on the next button. I'll just wait till I've entered that product key. There we go. So I clicked on the next button and then it took me to this next screen here where it already of course knew which uh, operating system I was using, which is Windows 10 Pro. So I just clicked on next there go ahead and install that. I then of course read the license terms and told them that I accepted them and clicked next again. Now it's most important that you do select this boot camp partition to install Windows, then click next. And you'll find that the installation process at this point is actually quite quick. Now I think on my particular Mac, that is because I'm using this one terabyte um, flash drive, which is very similar to an SSD, as I said. Um, but it's going from that drive to the same drive, which I guess is why it's uh, quite a quick installation process. In any case, I am going to fast forward to the point where that has been done. So it then went ahead and it restarted my computer again to continue with the setup procedure. Now I selected my country, Australia, and then went ahead and clicked uh, yes for that. And then after a moment or two, I selected my keyboard layout, which is US. So I clicked on yes for that. And I didn't want to add any second keyboard. So I skipped that. Now, the next thing I did was I clicked on I don't have internet. And that's because the Wi-Fi won't work until a little bit later. I clicked on continue with limited setup. And the reason the Wi-Fi isn't working at this point is because um, the drivers need to be installed a little bit later. We'll do that once we've actually got Windows installed. So I wouldn't bother trying to actually use the Wi-Fi and connect to the internet at this point. Now it sort of restarted again. And unfortunately I had to go through this sort of loop with this and click on, I don't have internet again, and then click on continue with limited setup. I don't know why it goes through that loop, but I, it happened every time I went through this process. I then went ahead and inserted my name here and then clicked on next. And then I created a password so that I could log into Windows. And then once I'd done that, again, I clicked on Next. And then I had to confirm that password, the usual routine here. Again, I clicked on Next. And then there were some security questions that I had to answer. This is so I can sort of recover um, my Windows installation a little bit later on if I want to. So I'll go ahead and fast forward the video through this part. You can, of course, set up your own security questions. Now, there's a whole bunch of privacy settings that um, they ask you about here. I generally switch everything off here and that's because most of these things in my experience tend to slow down your computer um, so yeah I switch them all off uh, maybe you could leave location on but mostly I like to switch it off I then went ahead and accepted all of my choices there and then I didn't want to use Cortana so I just clicked on not now for that and then it went ahead and it started to finally sort of set up everything that I needed in Windows. So I'm going to fast forward through this part of the process as well. Now, 
once Windows starts up, you're going to see that it's got this rather odd resolution where everything looks huge. Just leave that for the moment because it'll figure out the screen resolution for itself a little bit later on. The one thing you'll notice that's different to a regular Windows installation is this window has opened up, the Boot Camp window. This is where it's going to go ahead and install everything it needs to make all the hardware on this machine work properly. So I went ahead and I clicked on next on that window and then I just accepted the uh, terms and the license agreement, clicked on install. And again, it goes ahead and it installs everything that it's going to need to make all the hardware and everything work on this Mac. So we'll fast forward again through this process. Now, during that process, it actually did figure out something out about my screen resolutions. Unfortunately, it's kind of set it to the highest resolution, which I think is a bit of overkill. This is almost a 4K resolution. I'll adjust that a little bit later on. But in any case, the Boot Camp installer has finished at this point. So I went ahead and I clicked Finish, and then it asked me to restart the computer. I clicked Yes there to confirm that and it went ahead and restarted Windows. So Windows restarted again, and that's really all of its installation done. But I did want to make sure that I went ahead and set up the Wi-Fi so I can go ahead and download Cakewalk. So I went to the bottom right-hand corner for that, and then just clicked on that network icon there, and then went ahead and selected my Wi-Fi network and inserted the passwords, etc. That's going to be a little bit different depending on what you've got available, but I will definitely go ahead and set up your Wi-Fi so you can connect to the internet now. Now with all of that done, I wanted to go ahead and actually install Cakewalk. So I'm gonna invite you to go down to whatever web browser you're using. In this case, I clicked on the Microsoft Edge web browser and then go to cakewalksetup.com. This is my own completely free workshop, which you can use as a guide to installing Cakewalk. I'll walk you through how to download it and where to download it, and the initial process of setting up the hardware on your computer. Now, none of this is particularly exciting, but it is very, very necessary. So hopefully, if you use this workshop, you'll get through it as quickly as possible, and then you can start actually actually making some music. Now you may be finding at the moment that every time you start up your Mac, it automatically goes into the Windows operating system, but you may want to get back to your Mac operating system. Well, it's really easy. Just make sure when you're starting up that you hold down the option key while you press the power button. And then after a moment or two, you'll get this menu which pops up where you can choose between your Mac and your Windows operating system. It's that easy. So how well does it run? Well, the answer is really well. Despite its age, this machine is actually quite powerful and will run some pretty large projects in Cakewalk. The only thing you really have to do is learn how to use it. Now, one of the places you may go for help is my Facebook group for Cakewalk by BandLab. Follow the links in the description for that. It's full of really helpful people who are gonna help you out with some of those teething problems. Now, the other thing you may May want to do is watch this playlist that I have here on YouTube. This is full of tips and tricks for cakewalk and runs you through all of the basics. Why don't you grab yourself a beverage, sit back and binge on that right now.